back to Hypnosis Episode 5. This is Kevin Halcott. Uh, we're going to continue talking about the synchromysticism of Michael Jackson. Uh, in the previous part of the episode, we've been exploring some of Michael Jackson's associations with the rainbow, and particularly the rainbow bridge. Um, this rainbow bridge is a concept that Alice Bailey brought into the occult tradition through um, one of her Tibetan teachers. And the Tibetan teaching that was revealed to her was the existence of this thing called the Antakarana, which was this rainbow bridge that traverses heaven and earth. Um, they taught that the Antakarana was kind of a golden thread that connected our daily ego self to our transcendent spiritual self that is, you know, one with all, and um, it's basically our link to spirit, is this Antakarana thread, which is uh, taught to be a tower of energy that travels between heaven and earth. And uh, it's known as the Rainbow Bridge. Um, some teachings correspond to the seven chakras to the seven colors of the rainbow, uh, making the human body the rainbow bridge itself, uh, being the link between consciousness and matter. And uh, we understand that the rainbow also has alchemical meaning in terms of the process known as vitriol. And this was a formula that translates into visita interiore tiere rectificando in Viennese occultum lapidum which basically translates to visit the interior parts of the earth, find the hidden stone, and there will be rectification. Um, this is essentially kind of a formula for gnosis, that rectification can only come from within. Um, speaking in Gnostic dialogue terms, we could say that truth and salvation can only come from within, and these things do not come from faith in external things and uh, dogma and doctrine. So what we have is Michael Jackson, this popular character, resonating these mystical themes of this rainbow bridge that connects heaven and earth and this vitriol formula about the rectification of energy. Um, and when we look at the career of Michael Jackson, so much of his life was about unity and unification and about color um, and the unity of color. So we could even say that all of this rainbow symbolism that we're seeing surrounding Michael Jackson is his logos or is his um, a reflection of his soul, kind of like an aura. So as we look deeper into Michael Jackson's career, we'll see more and more how... Michael Jackson's life also resonates with afterlife concepts. All of these mystical themes that deal with transcending death are also themes that are central to the occult tradition, um, particularly the mysteries of the new aeon, where we understand that death is but the shadow of the body. Um, and that there is something transcendent. There is a transcendent spirit um, that is not something we achieve in heaven. It's right here and now. So it's interesting to see how Michael Jackson's life and his career resonate these symbols and symbolisms of a new age, um, along with all the unity, consciousness, and love that his career preached. Um, it's interesting to note that his spiritual advisor was Reverend Jesse Jackson, who founded the Rainbow Coalition in the uh, 1970s. So it's uh, important to me to consider all these symbols and all of these characters as part of the grand myth, um, a part of a mythic initiation process that involves everyone and uh, that these symbols are part of a larger conscious integration of new knowledge.
And that's why I like to focus in on pop culture when I'm exploring these themes of modern gnosis, because it appears to me that art and entertainment is where we express new gnosis, and it's kind of the playground upon which new gnosis is explored and kind of tried and tested and proves itself uh, in our lives and in our art. And I'd like to just point out this clip from the end of our last part of the episode where we see MJ singing about the planets lining up and bringing brighter days, uh, resonating the new age, the new aeon, and the age of Aquarius. So it's interesting to note that Michael Jackson was the moonwalker and that the moon is the uh, first sphere on the tree of life after the physical sphere of the earth um, that connects us to the astral triad, um, which is essentially the three spheres above earth on the tree of life. But what is important to think about is Michael Jackson's associations with the Rainbow Bridge and the Duat and other such things, and this title of Moonwalker um, as kind of a person who walks in the astral plane. Um, now I'm not claiming that Michael Jackson was uh, an astral traveler in his spare time or anything, but that his something about his life and his life force and the art that he attracted. Uh, resonates this lunar energy which also pertains to the astral plane and uh, archetypes like the Merkaba and the Duat and, and the Rainbow. Um, as I'm pointing out in this video here in the background, Michael Jackson was born in Indiana um, and sings a song called Dirty Diana. Uh, there's also some fascinating connections between his connection to the torch and uh, this torch memorial for Princess Diana that's in, I believe it's France. Um, so, as we mentioned in the last episode, uh, being part one of episode five, we were seeing Michael Jackson resonating with Pan, uh, talking about Neverland, his Neverland ranch, and this kind of lost boy reality that he lived in. Um, you can see that there's unicorns on the gates there, um, resonating these themes of never growing up. And as we mentioned before, and the archetype of spirit associates with this concept of eternal youth. Um, and never dying, because spirit is undying. Um, so we'll see that's a big theme in MJ's life, and after his life. Moving forward to take note that Michael Jackson played the Scarecrow in the 80s musical The Wiz, which takes place at the Twin Towers. Um, we can see that Diana Ross uh, takes the place of Dorothy Gale, and uh, there's more Diana energy, a lot of silver as well, which is the color of the moon. And uh, 
I found this just really fascinating in remembering that we just associated the Twin Towers and the Wizard of Oz through the serious police dog that died on 9-11 and the role of Toto in leading one over the rainbow in terms of theosophical lore such as the Wizard of Oz and as well as Alice Bailey's Antikorana theories. Um, just interesting to note that Michael Jackson is on a bridge again, uh, resonating the bridge energy here. It's interesting to remember that some of Michael Jackson's last shows were scheduled for the O2 performance space, which I think is in London. And O2 reads it like Oz, if you look at the number two as a resonator of the letter Z. It's pretty interesting. Uh, MJ also contributed a song to the soundtrack of E.T. the Extraterrestrial. Um, I noticed in the film that when E.T.'s ship flies away it leaves this trademark star followed by a rainbow. I noticed this come up again right in the beginning of MJ's Moonwalker promotional uh, clip here. Once again, just uh, another rainbow right where Michael Jackson's name is and the archetype of the High Priestess right there as well. Um, at this point we refer back to the Jesse Jackson rainbow push connection. Um, and at the time that I was having all these Michael Jackson synchronicities, there was a wild uh, movie coming out um, which had all these alchemical themes related to it. Uh, it begins in Black Falls, a rainbow stone, a philosopher's stone falls out of the sky. Um, crazy, crazy stuff. And this came out just after Michael Jackson passed away and I was compiling all of this rainbow symbolism. So, moving on to more Michael Jackson. In the beginning, the land was pure. Even in the early morning light, you could see the beauty in the forms of nature. Soon men and women of every color and shape would be here too. And they would find it all too easy sometimes not to see the colors and to ignore the beauty in each other. But they would never lose sight of the dream of a better world that they could unite and build together in triumph. Something that jumped out at me in the Can You Feel It Jackson 5 music video was the stone arches. Um, because at the time I'd seen the video, I was also aware of this uh, stone arch in Utah, which is called the Rainbow Bridge uh, National Monument. And uh, it's exactly 42 feet wide, which is the angle at which light and water meet to create a rainbow and something we focus on a lot with hypnosis. This arch is also near to the Kolob arch, um, which is interesting because Kolob is a bright star from the Book of Abraham and KLB in Hebrew means dog and the dog star is one of the brightest stars in the night sky, so um, it's fascinating how the Rainbow and Sirius uh, consistently entrained with each other as we've seen throughout this series um, in relation to the Twin Towers and Michael Jackson and other pop culture and occult themes.
interesting to note in terms of patterns that Radioheads and Rainbows is 42 minutes long. Uh, Jimi Hendrix's Rainbow Bridge album is 42 minutes long. The Rainbow Bridge in New York at Niagara Falls, which connects New York to Canada, connects via Canadian Route 420. Um, the Rainbow and the Tower are interesting to see together because this reminds me of the Antikorama, which is the Rainbow Bridge, or the tower of energy that travels between heaven and earth. Uh, the Twin Towers and the Rainbow connection is reaffirmed as we see the Rainbow and the Crumbled Towers in the Denver International Airport mural. It's interesting to note that in the Wiz we see this cube with the uh, Oz OZ in it. And uh, the symbol for the Antikorana Rainbow Bridge is also a cube. Uh, looking at the Wiz, we can see the Twin Towers and the Rainbow and Michael Jackson all come together. And um, interestingly enough, the Twin Towers are bridged in this Wiz scene. Uh, we discussed some of this in part one that on 9-11 a police dog named Sirius was killed and this is mystically significant because Sirius the blazing star of Freemasonry is often placed between the twin pillars of Jack and Boaz. Now a rainbow bridge ceremony was held for the police dog on April 24th being 4-2-4 2002. Um, just going over this again, this painting of Sirius was unveiled uh, with the Twin Towers. And uh, really fascinating connections. We're going to move on to some more Michael Jackson connections here from another video of mine next. And I was amazed when I saw South Park the week after Michael Jackson's passing. Um, the episode featured Zelda Rubenstein, who was the uh, kind of channeler from Poltergeist, which, uh, as we explored in other hypnosis episodes, the address of the house in Poltergeist is 42. And uh, Zelda Rubenstein has all kinds of rainbow connections that we'll explore. But here we see she's called in to try to help contact the spirit of, I believe it's Kyle's brother. And instead it's Michael Jackson who responds. And uh, we see this amazing poltergeist reference um, with the rainbow guy himself. Something interesting to note in Poltergeist 2 is that the screen that the little girl reaches out and touches in Poltergeist features 